caching dependencies and other commonly reused files enables developers to speed up their GitHub Action workflows and makes them more efficient. Let's look at how cache management works, as well as some new features that were just added to it. And let's give a little explanation of where the heck I am. Here we go. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about caching with GitHub Actions and show you a couple of new things we just released around caching. But first, where the heck am I? In an attempt to get better sound quality on my videos, I've converted a closet into a mini sound studio. One day, I might be fancy enough to hang a green screen, but for now, you get to see it in all its normal padded glory. Okay, let's get back to caching. First off, what do we mean by caching? Workflow runs often reuse the same outputs or downloaded dependencies from one run to the next. For example, package and dependency management tools like Maven or NPM keep a local cache of downloaded dependencies. If you are using hosted or ephemeral runners, then you are getting a clean runner for each job, which means that job may need to re-download a bunch of packages that you just downloaded in a previous job. Depending on the number of packages you need to download, this could be a significant hit to your build time. This is where caching comes in. Using the GitHub cache action, you can cache the files that you want to reuse between jobs or workflow runs. This can seriously decrease your workflow run times. For example, one customer I worked with when we implemented caching took a job from 20 minutes down to 4 minutes. That was quite the time saver. We have also just announced some updates to caching. For example, you can now manage your caches from within your web browser. You can also use a new cache API or a GitHub CLI extension to manage your caches from a terminal. Now, for today's demo, I'm going to be using some demo code that I found that I think makes caching easily understandable. I've linked to the original creators in the description below. So, Let's dive into an example of caching and see how it works. Before I get into the demo, I want to say thank you to one of the people on my team, Josh Johanning, who's also a DevOps architect on the GitHub FastTrack team, for finding me this demo code. Now, this demo code is out there. It's freely available. It's built off of this particular repository, which I forked. And there's even a write-up from someone else, not me, that explains how to use this demo code as well. But in this case, let's get started. So in this demo, we're gonna take a workflow and using caching, hopefully speed it up significantly. Now this is just a simple node app, and we're gonna start with a regular workflow with no caching and see how long it takes. So let's go into the .github workflows folder and look at the CI no cache YAML file. And what this YAML file does is checks out the code, uses the setup node action to set up a specific version of node, in this case 16.4.2, and then does a yarn install. So let's go to the actions tab. Let's select CI without caching and let's run this workflow. And we'll click into the workflow and we can see that it's going to start here in just a moment. Now, these demo workflows can take anywhere from a minute or even more sometimes. So I'm not going to make you sit here and watch it run. Instead, I'm going to kind of fade in and fade out. And we'll just look at the times once they finish. So I'll see you in a moment. So we can see the yarn install took about a minute and 13 seconds. And if we go back to the summary page, we can see that it took about a minute and 30 seconds. You can see that over here for this workflow to run. So now let's go add some caching and see if that makes it faster or slower. So we'll go back to code. Well, it should be hopefully make it faster. We'll go to the workflows and we'll go to the CI cache YAML file. Now what this YAML file does is it adds two lines, line 16 and line 18. The setup node action actually has 
access to GitHub caching built into it. So if you want to use the caching that the setup node action provides, you simply provide it a cache name and a cache dependency path, in this case, yarn.lock. So we've added two lines of code to our workflow file to implement caching. So let's run this and see what happens. So we'll go to CI cache. We're going to run this workflow. And I will see you when it finishes. All right, and we're back. So let's go back to our summary page and let's see if it ran faster or slower. Well, it actually ran slower, two minutes and four seconds. However, that's expected because what it's doing is setting up the initial cache. Now that we have set up that cache, if we run that same workflow again, it should run much faster. And because we haven't made any changes to the workflow file or to how we're accessing the cache, then it will use the cache that we used previously. Be back in a moment. Okay, looking at the numbers on the right hand side, it looks like it ran faster. Let's go back and compare. So without caching, it took one minute and 30 seconds. With caching, using the caching that the setup node provides, it took one minute and three seconds. So that is an increase, right? That's 27 seconds. That's a significant increase versus one minute and 30 seconds. Almost a third faster. But I wonder why it didn't go faster than that. And part of that may be that the yarn install still takes some time because it has to recompile the dependencies to work with the specific version of Node. So what if the Node version doesn't change? We're using the same Node version every time. Can we make it even faster? Let's find out. So we'll go back to code, we'll go back to workflows, and this time we'll look at the advanced caching. Now the advanced caching checks out the code, sets up Node, but you'll notice that we removed the statements where we were using the caching that Node provided. We're going to implement caching in a different way. So we're going to set up Node, then we're doing a run statement to get the version of Node that we're using. And we need that a little bit later for building our cache. And then finally, we're going to make use of the actions cache action to do our caching this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to say cache everything under Node modules. And then we're going to create a key for that cache, which is going to be the OS that we're using, the Node mod um, dash node modules dash a hash of the yarn lock file dash the version of node. Now as long as this key is the same every time, so I don't change the OS, I don't modify the yarn.lock file, and I'm running on 16.14.2 of node, then every time I run this workflow file after the first time, it will use that workflow's cache. So let's see this in action. But before we do that, where is the cache right now that we created when we ran the CI cache workflow? Well, we've added visibility to it inside of the web browser now. So you can select caches, and here's the cache that was created. We can see that it gave it a name. It's 520 megabytes, and it was created four minutes ago. And I can delete this cache from here if I want to as well. So I have the ability to manage my caches from within the browser if I want to. Now let's go to the advanced cache and run that. Now we expect the first time that we run this that it's going to take longer. And that's because it has to do everything it normally does as well as save the cache for us. So we'll let this run and we'll be back shortly. Okay. We're back, and we can tell that the yarn install took some time. 
Let's go back and actually look and see how much compared to everything else. So we can see that this run initially took 2 minutes and 36 seconds. Again, we're not surprised that it took longer because there's no cache and it had to create the cache and store the cache. But now, let's see what happens when we run this now that we have our cache created. And we can even see that cache by going to caches and there's the cache that it created for us. 170 megabytes. So let's go run this now. Let's click into it. And in fact, we're going to kind of watch this one and maybe look at a couple of things while it's running. So you can see it's downloading the setup node action. And then it's trying to check to see if the cache exists. Is what this step is doing. And the cache does exist, and it successfully restored the cache. So now it's going to run the yarn install. And bam, the yarn install, whoa, and we're done. Already, didn't even get to finish explaining everything. So let's go see how fast that one ran. And if we compare it with all the others, 32 seconds. So we took our initial workflow that took a minute and 30 seconds and knocked it down by almost 67%, by two thirds, to 32 seconds by implementing caching. That's pretty impressive. And we saw how through the web browser we can work with managing our caches. You also have the ability to do the same thing through the GitHub CLI using an extension. You can use it to view and delete your caches as well as directly with the API. But I'll save those for future videos. I hope you've enjoyed this video on caching and some of the new enhancements we've made to it. If so, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.